Yeah. Yeah. So you go to Portland State. Uh, you were there from uh, 97 to 98. Yeah. You make that 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 you know you're saying mom I'm, I'm i'm going to that college over there i'm going woo, yeah flying over and so what, what was the first experience there in, in here in portland that that you had that you can remember uh well it was a culture shock going from daytona beach florida to santa barbara okay but it was even more of a culture shock going from santa barbara to portland mm. and I have to be honest with you. I mean, I passed geography class and everything, but <laughs> when when they said Portland State, when when I was told, I, there's a cool story about this though. Uh, I was sitting on the couch yeah. watching the Buffalo Bills play the Miami Dolphins. Okay, a Miami For team, some right? Yeah. Reason, yeah. The Miami Dolphins, even though they weren't my team, they've been instrumental in my in my sure. process. Right. The Miami Dolphins were playing the Buffalo Bills, and Derek Holmes was a rookie running back for the Buffalo Bills. And I just remember watching this game, and they just kept mentioning Derek Holmes from Portland State University. And I remember as a sophomore in, in college going, where the heck is Portland State? That's University. Yeah, you're thinking that, going, what? Yeah. Geography-wise, yeah. where is this? Cool Geography-wise, to me, Portland was Maine. Back Point east, right, right, sure. you know, it wasn't it wasn't here, sure, in Portland. But, but anyways, um, I watched that game, and then Monday. So this was on a Sunday. That Monday, mm. I I'm in the weight room, and I get a call from uh, Coach Melendez. Art, come down to the football office. There's a college coach that wants to talk to you. I walk down to the football office, and this is a coach from Portland State University, wow. Bob Cole from Portland State wow. University. And I went, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> and so I learned, I learned that Nike was in Portland. And I went, and I always wanted to work for Nike. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, if he does not have a swoosh on his shirt, if they're not sponsored by Nike, I'm not going to that school. Interesting. The brand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so sure enough, I walked downstairs and this dude has a big swoosh on his, on his mm -hmm. shirt. And, and That sold you. I mean, that was part of it. It was part of it. It was part of it, yeah. But he and I got to know him a little a bit. Conversation and stuff like that. Which is important because, again, you're trying to find out about the team. They have interest in you. Yeah. But, again, you're trying to find out what could they, how could they utilize me, right? You're thinking mm -hmm. of that. But then also, did academics fall into, into play, too, that you were looking for? Um, I didn't sense? really. Well, I thought academically for myself based on climate. Mm, okay. And um, there was other colleges uh, that were recruiting me out of JC. There was... UCLA, there was San Diego State, oh, okay. there was San Jose State, mm. University of Hawaii, okay. um, Arizona. Wow. Like I had some big schools, you right. know, um, but Portland State was was pretty much the smallest school. Oh yeah. There was, you know, the University of Idaho was just kind of moving out of the big sky. Right. But it was, Portland State was technically the smallest school. And, but they were the first school to approach me as a, as in my second wave of being a football player. Well, a football player, right. And, um, and just the fact that all I heard on a Sunday was about Portland State and then Portland State showed up on a Monday. Mm. It just kind of, it just felt like destiny. Well, and also it, it, it had a nice flow to it. You know, it just, yeah. it, it really did. Uh, I think the thing is too, when you, when you look at where, you know, you look at the past offers and then you see, you see where you're at currently, this is a team that was interested in you, and, mm -hmm. and that had to say something with you and resonate with you in some way. Yeah. So, uh, would you was there a difference as far as being the wide receiver? You played wide receiver for both schools. Was there a difference in philosophy as far as what Santa Barbara was doing and then Portland State? Yeah, Santa Barbara was like high school. Okay. Everything was numbered. Okay. You right. know, you knew that a three route was a go route. Okay. You know, a two route was a slant. Right. You know, um, a one was a hitch. You know, you just knew that according to, I mean, that's pretty basic. And so... Um, Can I be right to say that Portland State was more of an up-tempo mm, at the time? No, it oh, was more it? West Coast. West Coast, yeah. So there was no leaving the huddle when you hear your number. Okay. So, you know, you might hear in JC it might be twins, right, um, go, goal 93. Yeah, right. And you knew, oh, I got a three route. So, you know, <laughs> okay. you run a three route. Okay. Nine was a three-step drop, you know. Right. But at Portland uh, State. But at Portland State, it was like, it was Zach Zipper right, 362. Wow. Razor. <laughs> so you had to be in the huddle for the whole 
You had to catch it all. You had to catch the whole play. You couldn't just go, I heard a snippet of it, and then I know I have an idea what it is. Wow, interesting. So it was a a tough transition for me, actually, uh, football-wise. I mean, Mm. I went from statistically one of the better players in J.C. Uh, I think think my sophomore year I scored almost 20 touchdowns. Wow. And then I went from that to scoring two touchdowns. Oh, what did that do? As a player, yeah, psychologically, yeah, was, that yeah. that you honestly start to second guess maybe the move in exactly. a sense. Is that correct? Exactly. Wow. Exactly. When I got here, there was a senior in my uh, – me and another senior played the same position. And I didn't understand football politics right. or college politics at the time. Right. Uh, and I say that not to d- put a damper on sure. how college football no, runs. Yeah. But the guy that was in front of me was a senior. And so I come in thinking, he's a senior, so he's going to play. I'm going to end up just playing behind him. I'm not thinking I'm coming in penciled in as a starter. Mm. So I'm really trying to relieve myself of the pressure of being a starter. And I remember asking Coach, Coach Cole if I could redshirt. And he just looks right at me be, almost before I can get it all the way out of my mouth. He goes, nope, you can't. No, you oh, cannot. wow. <laughs> you cannot. And I had three years to play, too, so I could have redshirted. Mm-hmm. But he said, no, you can't redshirt. And I just remember I arrived in Portland, Oregon, on July 29th, 1997. He remembers the date. Yeah, yeah. yeah. July 29th, 1997. Yeah. And we were in practice literally uh, September 1st. And um, I just remember looking at that playbook going, what the heck is it this? Terminology. Because my football IQ wasn't that great. Right. But my football abilities out were bigger than that my is IQ. what kind of balanced it yeah. in a sense for you but when you're talking <laughs> about and we know i mean the playbook in itself is a design playbook for that offense yeah. and it has to be understood as a player you know you have to understand that because if you don't mm-hmm. you honestly see people pass you right and they get playing time right wow and so it was it was tough for me it was a tough transition transition and then to have to prep our first game of the season in 1997 mm. was against uh, Fresno State. Oh, boy. Yeah. And Bulldogs. now I'm penciled in as a starter. <laughs> <laughs> and PSU didn't even have a wide receiver screen in the playbook before I got here. Nothing so, of that. Wow. Nothing. But in, in junior college, I scored a whole bunch of touchdowns off of that wide play. receiver scheme. So wow. they put it in. And that's the first play we're running in the game against. Okay, so... T- take a step back here. You're talking about a, a, a person that's saying, you know, kind of question himself, two touchdowns, you know, whatever. But now you're playing Fresno State. They've now installed a, a screen for you, a, a really a monumental play that you had previously at your other mm-hmm. college you played for. Boy, your heart had to been pumping. Oh, yeah. You, you were nervous. I, I hyperventilated. <laughs> I, I just wanted to make sure I caught the ball. Right. And so I catch, I, just, I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday. I catch the ball. I get about 18, 19 yards, and then I just run straight to the sideline because I can't breathe. <laughs> I, just, I just can't breathe because I'm so... Oh, wow. And then I come out and I catch a couple more passes, and I'm like, oh, man, I can play on this level. You're getting comfortable. Yeah. Right. You know, but as the season goes on, mm. again, with the low football IQ that I had, um, I realized that everybody on the team and everybody on the teams that I'm playing against, they were high school All-Americans too. You know, they were... Some of them that went to JC, they were JC All Americans as well. You know, I want to I want to hit something on that art. Is that you know what what would you say to a a, a player uh, just coming out of high school? They're getting into college now. Um, what do you think is the most important piece to that when they make that transition from high school sports? Now they're having to learn a playbook, and now they're having to learn a new system. Mm-hmm. What do you think? You know, mention it to our viewers. You know, what do you think is very important when it comes to a player like that who's um, being recruited? I think that it's important for the player to be coachable okay because the person you think you are as a high school player the identity that you've embraced uh, you find out real quick that is not really the identity hmm. that you're gonna have in college interesting concept there you know? yeah so because no, yeah. you line up against a, uh, a DB from a wide receiver standpoint you line right. up against a DB in high school and you your attitude is that no DB can, no cornerback can guard me man to man. Period. Um, that's that's just the attitude yeah. you want to have. Right. 
And then you get to college, and all of a sudden you can't get off the line of scrimmage in man press. Mm. Why? Because that guy on the other side said when he was in high school that no wide receiver will catch a pass on me in press coverage. Wow. But then he got to college, and he realized that, okay, these guys are good because he's playing with a guy that was there a year before. Right. And so right. now he's that much better. He was pushed. Yeah. He was pushed to be he's, better. He's, yeah, so yeah. He's, he's better. I mean, that was my experience anyways. Wow. And, yeah. and I couldn't get off, I could not get off the line of scrimmage. So could you say that a person like that, they, they have to lose that uh, sense of entitlement in a yeah. way when it comes from high school? Because in high school, uh, we, we were talking on our show, in fact, uh, the Fat Show was talking about, you know, especially recruiting now, um, is that these four-star, three-star, four-star, five-star uh, recruits, uh, we've seen examples where these are five-star recruits. They yeah. make it to the next level. And they don't pan out. They don't pan out. Uh, could you say that that is part of the, the process, is that understanding the playbook, and then, but not, not getting to a sense of, like, I need to work on my game, on my weaknesses? Yeah, it's that, but it starts with the coach, okay. the high school coach. Right. If you got a player who is dynamic and that you, you see his potential, I think it's your responsibility as his coach right. to help him see that potential, sure. to help him understand that potential, and to help him walk through this whole process with some humility. And you use that word humility. Yeah. Important word. Yeah. Uh, because again, you you start looking at yourself as humility, you look at your own weaknesses as mm -hmm. something that I need to improve in, right? Mm -hmm. Improve on. What I did with my players is um, we'd have Monday meetings. And Monday meetings wouldn't be about football. Mm. It would just be about life. Right. It would be about going into the next level. Right. The next big thing the plan B mm. because football's one one hit and football can be over for you. And so again, that's when we, we talk about after P Portland State, um, you're now then having to, you know, what, what is, what, what did art change into after, you know, having that experience at Santa Barbara, now Portland State, what was it that, you know, drove you currently, you know, you are a co-owner, right, of uh, Champions, Barbershop. Champions Barbershop here locally in Portland, Oregon. Um, but what was it that really helped and guide you after those experiences? And, and, and again, we, the Fat Show likes to focus in on from the beginning and what that process was in the middle and to really where you are right now. What was it that really drove you, uh, that, the, the certain uh, characteristics of what you experienced that made you the person that Art Williams is today? Oh man, you know, it was just a lot of, a, a lot of failure, right. believe it or not. I mean, and failure is not a bad thing when, when you can bounce back from it. Right. But it was the, um, all my experiences in college of the mistakes, some of the mistakes that I made, um, the football experiences, um, how I had to learn mm. to be a better player, how I had to learn to be a better person. Um, I we, think we talk about that because it's not only the player on the field, right. it's the player off the off field the as field. well, that's, as much as important. I think that's the most important part, right. who you are off the field. Because um, if you see your identity just through football, or like a football player, yeah. then you don't really, you never really take an opportunity to learn who you are. Because football is not, football does not love you. Hmm. You love it, but it doesn't love you. Wow. And so for me, it was just, going through that process and, and understanding light bulb clicks that, okay, football doesn't love me. I love football, but it doesn't love me because my football career just ended with a concussion. Wow. You know, if football loved me, football wouldn't have hurt me like that kind of thing. That was my, man, my mentality. And, and when we speak concussion, <clears throat> we, we are talking about a very sensitive subject. When we're Absolutely. talking about the NFL, we're talking about kids uh, in, you know, um, some of the Pop Warner leagues and things like that. We have parents that are really concerned. Um, I think the equipment has, has changed a lot, which I don't think protects the player, but it makes the game faster because the players are bigger and faster. Faster, right. You know, um, but I think that the rules that they're setting in, the techniques, the tackling techniques now um, that are in place have decreased. There's been like a 20% decrease in concussions this Perfect. past season, which is great. I like how you talk about that because it's I think great. technique is important and you start that in practice, oh, yeah. right? Every day. Um, you know, hip you level how and how you tackle, how you're wrapping. Yep. Um, yeah. And, it, and the other thing is the helmet is not a weapon. 
No. I mean, that's, that's the thing that but we're seeing. But it used to be when we played. Yes, play, yes. It used to be the first weapon. Right, exactly. Um, and so we're teaching that now. We're coaching that now to to uh, use your shoulders. And I, I actually thought we'd see more shoulder injuries than we would see head injuries, mm. uh, which we haven't seen. I mean, there's there's decrease in head injuries and not many shoulder injuries. Yeah, shoulder separation, yeah, sort of that. Yeah, right. because you're leaving with the and shoulder. So, I mean, we're, but, we're but really, it's, it's the wrapping up. It's the it's the using of the hands and the arms and being able to, mm -hmm. to, to, to take the player down, in a sense, right. from that standpoint. Right, which you have seen more injuries like torn biceps, torn. Right. Um, torn pectorals well, right because like it's that. momentum going one direction yeah. the other momentum's taking another way and so yeah. who wins that battle uh interesting to say but you know um westland high school now uh last year was quite a year yes uh, it was quite a year uh hence a little bit of uh Ooh. something there from uh piece you, of jewelry. yeah piece of jewelry <laughs> right so evidence of that that yeah. year very special year what made that so special for you westland high school uh winning the state title um 14 and 0, right? 14 and 0. Right. Uh, I always forget that part. You know, I always, when I think about it, I'm like, man, we won a state championship. You always have to remind yourself, right? But we won 14 games. Right. You know, um, and if you, yeah. And so it was just one of those surreal moments. But the season, we came in with a mentality that we were going to be great, mm -hmm. that we wanted to be great. Um, our motto was strive. Strive for greatness, but settle for perfection. I mean, strive for perfection, but settle for greatness. That's an interesting uh, you know, motto there. That's marinate important. in greatness. Right. And so that's the way we practiced every day. We practiced with that same mentality every day. And um, we came out and we just, we just executed. Coaches really did a good job of putting together a game plan to put kids in the right positions to make plays that's key yeah. I always heard I've always heard that saying it's 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 that moment to where you say you get to a squad or you get to a team that coaches instrumental mm -hmm. on your development and what you're able to do yes. and playing time <laughs> let's Actually, be very clear about that yeah. um, but I think again you had players on that squad uh, what were some players that you had on that squad in the 14 0 squad uh, yeah. 14 0 squad like a, a Jake Mysa, yeah, who was a receiver he came okay. to me I worked with Jake in the off season and Jake played behind Connor Bergeron who is now at University of Oregon oh wow okay and Connor Bergeron put up 2,200 yards wow. and, or 2,000 yards, 22, 23 touchdowns. Right. And so Jake Meissen comes in and has to take his place the next season. Big shoes to fill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he, you're working, you're, you're, you're but, working him. But right? I'm working with yeah, him. Yeah. And, that's... and he tells me in the offseason, he goes, coach, I want to be, I want to be first team all league. I want to be first team all state. Um, Give him with goals. Yeah. And I want to go to college. Oh, wow. Kid scores 20 touchdowns. He, he plays, he plays. I wish Jake was here right now. He played the championship game with 103 degree temperature. No lie. Wow. No, that, I, that is I, impressive. I would not lie to you. That is impressive. I because you got all that gear on and yeah. you're sweating. I mean, it's like. I'm, every time he comes to the sideline, I'm handing them Gatorade. Right. Handing them Gatorade. But I, I just remember calling that young kid because mm. I knew there was nothing in the world that was going to keep that kid out of playing in this game unless he had a broke hand or a broke leg or something. Right, right. And uh, I just called him up and I, I just told him I was praying for him and I, I hope that he can play on, on, that, on that Saturday. And it wasn't me being one of those coaches that were, was thinking, man, we really need Jay. Right. Because I was always told as a coach, you're only as good as the second team player. Wow. Um, so, you know, Art, it's been a pleasure to Thank have you, you with us. You know, check out Westland High School football. Uh, we have Art Williams here, uh, and I think that they're going to be doing some special things next year, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so yes, sir. Do, do catch them. Uh, you know, come to a game. Uh, meet Art. I'm sure he'd be happy to meet you uh, when he has time not coaching. Uh, but we, we appreciate you being on the show, uh, on the you. Fat Show, Art, and we hope to see you again. Thank okay? you for having me. All right, you bet. Uh, so this is Kevin with the Fat Show. Uh, we appreciate you uh, viewing in and, and seeing our local content here. Uh, tune back to us if you can. Uh, we look forward to giving you more exciting content in the future. Thank you very much for watching.